Hi, this is Mark Costco in Jackson, Mississippi. I'd like to share an interesting case of an UGG syndrome caused by the temporal haptic of a single piece toric acrylic lens being in the sulcus on the temporal side. You can see the transillumination defects towards the bottom of the screen. Um, interestingly, this patient already has an open capsule from a, a YAG capsulotomy. Uh, that was uh, done uh, by a previous provider. Um, and, um, and so we're not sure what's going to happen here, how stable this is going to be, if we're going to have to take the lens out, do a, a Yamani fixated lens. Uh, so we went on and placed a trocar while the eye was still pressurized and didn't have many incisions. Uh, sometimes blue can help you see uh, the capsule. In this case, it ultimately didn't, but we, we put some of that in. Uh, the original surgery here was done actually by um, a surgeon who I know to be ex extremely excellent uh, and talented. And, um, um, but uh, I, the patient I know was on Flomax and had really poor dilation. And um, postoperatively, it wasn't clear uh, why he was you know, having cystoid macular edema and um, a lot of pressure spikes from the steroids that were necessitated for the CME and ultimately it was discovered uh, that this temporal haptic was was in the sulcus. You, you saw me earlier um, uh, kind of go at it with a chopper uh, just kind of verifying that and here what I'm doing is using a Grover Fellman spatula which was actually invented for uh, ab interno bleb revisions which I have other videos of that on my channel. Uh, but I go underneath the capsule with that first, and here I'm on a 25 gauge hypodermic needle uh, with viscode initially, um, and uh, I'm gonna burp my wound a little bit here. I don't want to overpressurize, uh, and so then I'm gonna try to get back under that capsule. But because the temporal haptic is in the sulcus, it, it kind of uh, doesn't really want to let me get underneath there with with um, the cannula, so I'm going to use a two-handed technique where I'm going to lift up on the capsule with the Grover Feldman spatula and then slip underneath it with, um, I think at this point, the ProBisc cannula. And uh, we're just going to make sure we get the fornix of the capsule there fully inflated. And right here, I've actually, I won't have any editing in this portion of the video uh, because I, I want to show how tedious this is. You know, if you think about it, we've got an open capsule post jag situation. Haven't seen any vitreous present yet, but as we try to get this lens dialed into the capsular fornix, what, what's left of it, we, um, what's left of it post jag, we, we don't want to have the lens or the haptic fall into the vitreous, get tangled in the vitreous. So it's real, um, I'm, I mean, I'm kind of holding my breath. I'm, I, um, you know, I probably am ever so slightly sh shaking because I'm just nervous, you know, trying to get this in there just right. I really want it to go into the fornix of the capsular bag without hooking the edge of the YAG capsulotomy. Um, and so I'm just kind of tediously, and it's, it's, it's hard to appreciate in this two-dimensional video, but um, the, 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 the actual three dimensions of how we did this. And there you could see me just sort of using the chopper to sort of go underneath the anterior capsule. And, and here I am poking at the anterior capsule to verify that I am in fact in the capsule, uh, capsular bag now. Um, I'm gonna place a few more iris hooks just to uh, visualize. And here I'm down in the capsular fornix, just kind of poking on that haptic, trying to get it well seated deeply in the fornix. I'm going to put a little bit more ProVisc in there. I'm trying to decide if my lens is centered, you know, do I try to free up the nasal haptic, expand the lens and, you know, but I end up deciding to just kind of nudge it a little bit as you just saw me do. And now I'm going to swing back sitting temporarily. Uh, and rather than dial it out, it, it actually looks great. So <laughs> I, I decided not to, you know, my dad always taught me the enemy of good is better. So, uh, or at least he says that to me today when he watches these videos. Uh, he's a retired eye surgeon himself. 
Um, so I've got this on 10x speed, just showing I did some vitrectomy. Uh, we already had the trocar in there, and there was so much viscoelastic behind the lens at this point. I just wanted to get all that out of there. Uh, we're going to take our hooks out here on the temporal side. Uh, you can see I have just a little bit of heme that's made its way into the anterior chamber at the bottom of your screen. Um, I'm going to try to sort of like visco remove that uh, here in a second. You'll also see my markings on the cornea. The larger, more dominant markings is the, is the steep axis. Um, and then this other markings on the side are marked for 30 gauge, I'm sorry, not a 30 gauge, a 30 degree uh, LRI on either side. If I was gonna put the, if I was gonna take the lens out and put it in the, put a three piece in the sulcus, I, I wanted to have a good LRI. What's interesting is that I, I realized actually the lens is in the correct axis and the patient just still had some residual astigmatism. So ultimately what I do at the end of the video is I, rather than make two LRIs, I just make one. Uh, since I didn't have to spin the lens, uh, it was in the intended uh, appropriate axis, but the patient still had, I think, about 0.75 diopters of astigmatism. So I ended up hedging and just doing one LRI, as you'll see towards the end. This is another portion of the video where I've not edited at all. This is a uh, Tenno Proline on a CIF4 needle. Um, I've not edited this at all. Uh, I think when we watch videos like this, you know, folks tend to edit them so much that it makes it look unrealistically easy, which in turn makes it unrealistically intimidating uh, to try to do it yourself. But I, this is unedited. Uh, I have practiced this on uh, Simulis from uh, Golden Ophthalmics before I started doing iris work. and I. Done a, done a few other cases like this, but uh, I just chose to just show this pass here um, as, it, as it actually was. Uh, you see me fumble with it ever so slightly. I'm docking the needle in the tip of um, a provisc or viscoat cannula, or at least I'm trying to. <laughs> uh, you can see all those uh, translumination defects um, and, and that was probably a combination of, I'm going to guess, some Irish prolapse at the time of the original FACO because of really significant flow max situation. And also, at the slit lamp, you could see a, a translumination defect in the shape of the haptic, uh, the temporal haptic. So, at any rate, you see all those TIDs. Um, uh, what I'm going to do here, I, I think is interesting. I, I don't know if this is original or not, but I'm... I'm going to pull both ends of the suture. I've cut my needle off, and I'm going to pull both ends of the suture out my main incision here. Um, so I'll have two ends of that suture that we passed, both ends of it, out the main incision. And I'll do a single pass fourth row, but I'll sort of cinch it down with one uh, instrument, my micro tire inside the eye. And I don't, I don't really know what technique to call that, like a McAhmed uh, uh, single pass four throw pupiloplasty, uh, something, I, there may be a better term for it than that. But, and unfortunately my XY is off here, so you don't really get to see me do it. But I, I, um, I, I make four here I'm just kind of tugging to sort of look, see what's going to happen as I pull on it. Uh, and so then you see I've got four throws around that micro uh, grasper. There's four throws around it. And then I grasp the other end, grasp the other end, got it, okay. And then I'm going to sort of slide those passes off the tire. You see it coming off the tip of the, the micro tire. Uh, and then um, I'm going to slide that. I'm going to go back in the eye with that. Again, that's a single pass four throw, but I'm sort of cinching it down uh, with one instrument inside the eye. It's not any kind of like sliding four throw or anything. Um, uh, so you see I've got it cinched down. I had considered, you know, doing some sort of synthetic iris in this area. Um, there companies that make uh, iris prostheses that can go in the 
capsule or even go into sulcus, but they're not FDA approved in the United States, so you have to fill out all this compassionate use authorization stuff. I looked into it, but ultimately I just I just wasn't sure if I was if that was you know, I didn't want to put something in the sulcus because you know, we already have TIDs from something in the sulcus. So, and then I wasn't sure if I want to put something in the capsular fornix because I'm status post YAG and I didn't know if it would be stable. So I decided, even though it was a relatively large TID, here I'm painting with Myocol. I decided even though it was relatively large TID, I was just going to see if I could get much out of just a simple suture. And look, we did. It looks great. I, I was real pleasantly surprised. So we painted the iris with some myocol or myostat, whatever we have in our surgery center, uh, to constrict the pupil a little bit, hydrate the wounds. Um, I also burped uh, some viscoelastic. At this point, all we have is proviscanide, so we burped it out. That was cefuroxime. Here is doing sort of a modest LRI to go after the residual astigmatism. Um, and sometimes I just like to look and see if, you know, sometimes you can't, can't quite tell how much tip of the diamond is showing. Uh, incision is dry. Um, and next thing I'm going to do, uh, before I come out with the trocar, I like the eye to be very soft uh, because I don't want any vitreous trying to come out my trocar site. Uh, I like to be a very soft situation. If the eye is very pressurized, um, it, the incisions will can leak more. So... So out with the trocar in a very soft eye, massage a little bit uh, with cotton tip applicator. Um, uh, after a few seconds, just sort of reinflate the eye to a normal physiologic pressure. And uh, that's it. Parse plane of vitrectomy, put the temporal haptic from the sulcus to the capsular fornix, LRI, iris repair. Uh, patient did great. We're really excited about it. Thanks so much for watching. Um, and those are the four kiddos under the Christmas tree.